epago. It um, comes from ancient Greek and it means to induce because the original idea and uh, what is still at the core of our uh, technology is to induce nanoparticles of noble metals inside of a carbon nanostructure. When I was in, in Europe um, working on different, uh, in, in the other startups, I always thought that my happiest moment would be when I would actually manage to secure funding from my startup. I, I think every founder dreams of uh, getting funded, on convincing investors. That's the most spoken about part. That's definitely something that was extremely rewarding and uh, that came with a lot of responsibility. But surprisingly, it's not the moment that I have more vividly impressed in my mind. Actually, it was quite a while ago. We were uh, still trying to develop some critical parts of our technology and we tried so many things and we knew the answer was somewhere there, but somehow it was slipping through our fingers. Until one day, uh, we were waiting for the, re the results and we had to compute all the data and get a chart. And I remember we were called uh, around the computer and we were looking at this chart that shows the, the output of our product. And it was just working. And we were all together looking at this chart that probably no one would understand what we were looking at. And we were just like hugging each other and uh, giving high fives. That was, I think, one of the most exciting moments. Uh, even though now we're much further ahead in the development of the technology. I think seeing your things, seeing what you're building come together is definitely the most rewarding thing and something that really, I would say, is the most fulfilling part of this journey. Our major product actually is the membrane electrode assembly. So which contains the catalyst layer and also the gas diffusion layer and also the membrane itself. And then you can apply it in a lot of different applications. One application that we are focusing on now is to make it into a dehumidifier. So the whole dehumidifier is based on the idea of the high uh, water hydrolysis. So uh, basically you need to split water and uh, into like you know, hydrogen and uh, also oxygen. Let's talk about like you know, the dehumidifier. We name it uh, like an you know, Athentis and uh, it can help to do the dehumidification in a certain space as well as the humidification uh, in that certain space. So this application can be used in a lot of like scenarios for example, uh, in the museums, that if you have a statue or like an art piece that you want to protect, you want to keep the humidity of that product like at a certain level, then you can use our product to you know adjust or to control the humidity. So currently, like you know, what's being used in those museums is the humidifier in that size. It's kind of like in a big, heavy and uh, like most importantly uh, it's very expensive it would cost about like 25,000 Hong Kong dollar for per piece and our product is kind of like you know, just a small square like a 20 by 20 centimeter square and uh, it's really light and it's also kind of like you know, it can be really easily to be applied into the showcase for the museums and also the cost can be like in you know, a cut to almost a half so that would kind of like you know, really change the whole thing. So this project uh, is actually quite fresh, but uh, we are already in talks uh, for orders between 300,000 to 1 million Hong Kong dollars that uh, probably are going to become real by the first and the second quarter of 2025. We are already in talks for two uh, further steps in our evolution. Uh, the first one is going to be an expansion in Europe where we already have signed a letter of interest and actually agreements with uh, local companies and institutions so we can leverage a very favorable ecosystem for our particular technology. And later on, the idea is that to come back in, um, in mainland China with a much more mature product that we then can use to be very competitive in what is a very competitive market. When it comes to the broader horizon that we have in the next five years, we aim to uh, also tackle the automotive industry, the energy generation industry with electrolyzers, with fuel cell stacks that we are able to produce for uh, trucks, forklifts, bus, trains. Um, and that is a market that is estimated to reach 43 billion US dollar around 2028.
original reason why I was looking for uh, positions in Asia is because we were trying to be closer with my wife's family. So my wife is from, from Guangdong region, from Siuhan. But Hong Kong was an um, obvious choice. When it comes to tech, I think uh, Hong Kong is still in the early stages of having tech as a core focus. I mean, we know that Hong Kong uh, traditionally has been more associated with financial services, but uh, I think uh, coming here to Science Park is very impressive. The advancements that have been done in the past uh, 20 years uh, to really make tech the central stage uh, of development of the city. There is definitely uh, room for improvement and also definitely one of the points would be regulation and bureaucracy. Those are two very important things that everywhere condition the success or the failure of companies. I think I met more people in Hong Kong in the past three years than I really met almost in my whole life and uh, the variety uh, and the backgrounds and the uh, industries that I managed to unveil here are really endless. I think in, in the startup industry in particular, we glamorize a lot uh, success, while we don't talk a lot about uh, failures. Maybe we don't talk at all about failures. And that's understandable because everyone wants to be the next uh, Elon Musk, the next uh, Mark Zuckerberg. But I think, especially for young entrepreneurs, uh, maybe students, it's very important to understand that failure is is, is coming and uh, it's part of the, of the process. While it was definitely painful for me, uh, it's uh, definitely part of my growth.